Tonight's game is brought to you in HDTV by Harris Corporation, the world leader in broadcast systems as we get started and with the high seed Oklahoma State in the white uniforms with the first possession. Jumper way too strong, too pumped up, and it comes out to Lewis. Tough shooting over Sensor. Elder makes a quick cut on that testy ankle. Jack in the lane, back of the rim, and tipped out to Lucas. He's running right through and loses it on the way in. It's Elder coming out with it. We two expect, on two. Jim, we expected the game to be a little slower paced than this. <laughs> Both teams off and running, taking advantage of break opportunities. Joey Graham with the push. And they were pushing it up the floor to start. Absolutely. And if they play at this pace, it certainly favors Georgia Tech. Oklahoma State would much rather play in half-court sets. Out to the captain, Lewis. Tech turns it over. Be very difficult. Normally, Elder can take his man inside. But Allen it can take anybody in a defensive low post position. Full court pressure here. One, two, two, full court pressure. Drop back to man to man. Stay in the zone. How about this? Jack up top. Graham cutting, Schincher defending, and that one spins out, but he's going to the line. The road to San Antonio for Georgia Tech. Jim Graham could have easily has been the most valuable player in the Big 12 tournament. Tremendous ball games out there. 25 and 9, 16 and 4, 14 and 8. This young man is so strong with his hands and upper body, has great quickness, and we remember that slip last weekend, which turned out to be the maybe one of the great assists of the NCAA tournament when he kicked it out to Lucas. Unwittingly setting up and baiting the St. Joe's defender and feeding Lucas for what proved to be the winner. So, he bangs home two free throws to get the scoring underway. Double down by Graham on Schenzer. That ball tipped by Allen, quick hands back to Elder. And now, Lucas is playing on Lewis. He's given up a lot of size. Lewis ought to get good looks and ducks. That's a three, Marvin Lewis. There you see what Eddie Sutton matchup is gonna be. He figures that Lucas is too small to handle either Jack or Elder, so he puts him on Lewis, who has not been hot of late. Lucas fakes the three. Now Allen, stutter step, and he draws the foul on the drive outside. Jim, one of the things that's got to be interesting is, is the fact that Allen only has taken this year 21 threes. You've got to play him for the drive or the pull-up jumper. So that foul on Lewis. And here's Lucas now from the same spot on the floor that sent him to San Antonio. Rebound, McFarlane. McFarlane got away with an excellent dunk. Good hit inside. Schenzer can't hold. He almost tipped it in. Tips it off the backboard. Here come the Cowboys. Feed the Graham. He's got a size advantage here and gets the basket. Two times in a row, Georgia Tech has been bad matchups defensively. Jack on the drive and the kick out. Elder with a three. Line driver. Tipped Not out. Bobbitt. Not a good shot. Much better quickness for Oklahoma State on Schencher inside. Bobbitt with a three. Only Schencher underneath. And not a good idea, Jim. You made a good point there. Schencher the only one under. Nobody there to rebound for Oklahoma State. McHenry gives it inside. Schencher. McFarlane has his hands full. Given up probably, would you say, Jim, 8 to 10 inches, it looks like, doesn't it? You said in warm It's unbelievable. He's the tallest player on the field by a head. So timeout, Oklahoma State. Interesting when Paul said the other night, the only thing I'm looking at in the three opposing coaches is that they've won over 2,000 games <laughs> <That's> between them. <laughs> Just his fourth season at Georgia Tech coming over from Siena, where in three years he led them to the NCAA's final year and made the hop down to the ACC. Georgia Tech now back to man-to-man. -to -man. That's going to be hard to run that play with Schenzer inside. Should have been stolen, but they tip it out to Lucas. 12 on the shot clock, no reset. Lucas took a look up at the shot clock, looking for a, well, he's got Schincher on him for a moment. Allen
Allen from the wing with the three. Good recognition by Lucas. He was picked up by big men, found the open man, something that this team that shoots almost 52% from the floor is very capable of doing. McHenry not looking for a shot. I think that Georgia Tech would be wise to get the ball down inside the center and force double teams. And here's Lewis, a man, Jim, who has really been off of his shot. Well, but not tonight. That's two threes already for the captain of the Yellow Jackets. Here's that one, two, two full court pressure. See if they drop back into the zone as they did the last time. Yes, they do. Little matchup zone. Wide open, McFarlane gets it back and now doubled up. Boy, he was wide open. Lucas in the corner. This is a matchup zone right here, and Georgia Tech is kind of playing it a little loose. There's no reset. McFarland missed by so much. Oh. Lucas drives, and that one rolls out. And Schincher, with that huge height advantage, pulls it away. It's amazing. Lucas got that ball off. And it's Lewis for the third time in the first four and a half minutes. Jim Lewis. 0 for 3, no points against Northern Iowa. Only had one point against Kansas. He is an outstanding shooter and in the good role tonight. He's had one big game in this tournament. He led the way against Nevada with 23, and they needed him to pull away from the Wolf Pack. That's Allen rattling out. McFarlane spats it in. Wow, how about that? Second tap. That one over Shenzhen. Very difficult to do for a man giving up that much size. Lewis, can he make it four? Nope. Up front of the rim, back out to Elder. What are you noticing out of B.J. Elder so far? Well, it, it looks to me like he's running. I haven't seen him have to cut sharply so far or defend that way, but I think he's pretty close to 100%. Trying to post up down inside on Lucas. He gets the double team. Allen spins away. He's got a three-on-one. High dribble, gets away with it, and lays it in. Oklahoma State, 13-11. Oh, there's a good block out by Jensen inside. You got to make that shot with a wide open look. That was Allen's 72nd steal of the year. Terrific anticipation on his part. Graham head fake once, shoots it the second time, and McHenry sends it back to the Yellow Jackets. Lewis wide open for his fourth three of the night. Four out of five from behind the arc. We're talking about one of the best three-point shooters career-wise in Georgia Tech history. As I said before, he had been in a slight slump in the postseason, but he's filling up now with a lot of easy looks. Over the top. Push. And it's going the other way. It's called on Tony Allen. That was a push from behind. Easy one to call. Final four is underway. Marvin Lewis has 12 of Tech's 14. How about this? We've had back-to-back -back years where a coach took his alma mater to the national championship with Gary Williams right. and, and then Jimmy Beheim last year. And Eddie Sutton has a chance to do that this time. And this is a charge, a charge against Georgia Tech. We see Georgia Tech now, Jim, going to that bench. Bynum and Moore come in and Mohammed. Tarver in the ball game. So. If, as I said at the top of the show, Georgia Tech has any advantage in any aspect of this game, their bench has been truly outstanding throughout the course of the year and been totally sensational in this tournament. They've outscored their opponent's bench 92 to 45. It was Will Bynum on the charge after just coming in out of the break, his first action. And that was last touched by I, Georgia Tech. I thought Muhammad got Allen's arm that time. Allen was complaining, and rightfully so. It's one of the few guys Allen will ever face man to man that's as strong as he is at that position. Weatherspoon is in for the Cowboys. Muhammad with the steal. He forced it. Crawford with his first action also for the Cowboys, number 42. Lewis with a hot hand stays in the game. Shoots again. Not a good shot, was gliding. Oh, what a move. And a steal again. Muhammad comes right in with two thefts. Three on one, Bynum. And Crawford brings it down, but they say a piece of the arm as well. Bynum is fearless. We saw the incredible drive he made in the Nevada game to put Georgia Tech in this position. Takes it on the bigger man. Crawford probably should have passed it. They had a four on one break that time, and all they get out of it is a chance for two fouls. Crawford almost blocked that one with his chin. 
Will Bynum Jr. started his career at Arizona, almost transferred to Oklahoma State. They thought they had him. Changed his mind, went to Georgia Tech, but there was some trickle-down effects with that. As you take a look at the road, two for Georgia Tech. Again, four wins by 21 points total, and the largest margin was actually an overtime win. They've actually trailed in the second half of all four tournament games. I am an 80% free throw shooter. And here you see full court pressure. Paul Hewitt wanting to force tempo in this game. Georgia Tech matching up, but they're getting caught in a lot of bad situations. Now they're playing the man-to-man. Mohammed down on Witherspoon. That's Lucas. He shoots that fadeaway pullback jumper as well as anybody his size. That's how he gets it off. Too small to shoot the standard jumper. Look at Muhammad. Uh, too strong with the layup. Beautiful spin away from two defenders. And that pass was intended for McFarlane, knocked out by Moore. Nice anticipation by Moore because that had been an easy two inside. Hey, Billy, the Cowboys had the toughest road to the Final Four of uh, any of the teams here in San Antonio. They had to play the actual highest possible seed they could meet every step of the way, including the three and the one in East Rutherford. No one else in the Final Four had to play a, a seed that high, a one or a three. I think considering the competition, their wins back-to-back, -back, Pitt and St. Joe's probably the two toughest wins in the tournament. On the line, and it'll still be Oklahoma State ball, as Tarver, Theotis Tarver, knocked that out. We've had five lead changes. And a good start here in San Antonio. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, Bonnie Bernstein here deep in the heart of Texas. This is Big 12 country, and there is a lot of orange in the arena here. Clearly more uh, Oklahoma State fans in the Alamo Dome than uh, any of the other three. And wouldn't you think, uh, Jim, this being Texas, Big 12 fans would be pulling for Oklahoma State? No question. Here's the straight man-to-man, -man, Muhammad going outside with that strength. One on the shot clock. Look at that. One second on the shot clock, and Bobek able to draw the foul. Smart, smart move from the young man that transferred from BYU. He kept the ball in his hands. One pass, he wouldn't have been able to beat that shot clock. He recognized it with experience, takes it to the hole. Bad reach-in foul right that time by B.J. Elder. Elder, his first. You mentioned a BYU transfer. Played at BYU, went on a Mormon mission down to the Dominican Republic, came back, didn't feel like he was going to get minutes, and transferred to Oklahoma State. wonder what gave him a clue to chance transfer to Oklahoma State. Think the fact that his dad had played for Eddie Sutton had yeah. anything, anything to do with it? His father, Ralph, played for Eddie Sutton at Creighton and actually played on one of Eddie's tournament teams long ago. Oklahoma State in their traditional man-to-man. -man. No change at all. Getting out much tighter is Witherspoon on, on Lewis. Good defense. Taking away that jump shot that was so open early in this game. Yeah, Witherspoon, something else out there on the D. And Jack jams at home. Three-pointer. That's what I like about Jack. He recognized he's the man that was going to have to take that shot. Here we see dropping back now is Georgia Tech's defense. Nobody out high. Allen on the line. That's going back to Georgia Tech. May I point out again, Muhammad, one of the few guys in college basketball strong enough to play Allen on that baseline. Lucas returns, and Allen sits. You can see what Eddie Sutton's doing right away. He recognizes the deep bench of Georgia Tech. He's trying to rotate his starters because he knows that this game is going to be tight. He's taking the chance, but he stays right in there and keeps his guys fresh for the end. Tough pass. pass, yes. Crawford had an eye on it. That last basket by Jarrett Jack, his first points of the night, and a takeaway by Oklahoma State. Excellent post defense by Oklahoma State. Georgia Tech has not been able to feed the low post that they want. I think they can feed over the top to Shenson. Lucas, top of the key three. Bahamut on the run. Bahamut. Oh, he very seldom doesn't get his dunk. And 
slow to get up. Yep. Hobbling back on defense. Good hit. Bobbick. You said Billy could be the silent killer out here. That was good recognition by Lucas. Muhammad very seldom puts himself in a position because of his great elevation that he can't complete the dunk inside. That may be the first time I've seen that happen to him all year. Here he goes. A little bit off balance, but he has such great elevation, he normally puts that one down. He's made two beautiful moves to the basket now and both times unable to finish. Five lead changes, three ties. Georgia Tech's shot selection, nine of their 13 have been from behind the arc. I'm surprised they're not going to the sensor. Throw it up high and make them double down. Back in on McFarland. There right he is. back to Schencher. McFarland thought he had a clean block. He probably did have a pretty good block, but I think that's an answer for Georgia Tech. Throw it right over the top. Marvin Lewis has knocked down four threes, Billy. Jim, this young man's been an 80% free throw shooter throughout his career and a 40% three-point shooter, so not surprising if you're going to give him open looks. Eddie Sutton recognizing now that he's got a low post problem if Georgia Tech goes over the top to Schenzer. He's got so much size. Do you agree with what a lot of people say, Shinsher, the most improved player in the ACC? There is no question about it, Jimmy. Maybe the most improved player in the country. In the last seven games last year, he played a total of 20 minutes and scored two points. We're now talking about a guy that's a legitimate starter on a team that's in the Final Four. You can't improve much more than that. And Shinsher, who has extensive international experience playing for Team Australia, including a matchup once against Yao Ming, he gets the second one to go. Tony Allen not on the floor. Don't know how long Eddie Sutton can go without getting his premier scorer out there. Hedge move, but you got to stay with Lucas. He'll make the play. Double up on McFarland. Schencher forced it away. Great play. Right back to Jack. Well, McFarland made a terrific play. But he got swarmed at the other end. He really did. See if Jack recognizes that they can go over the top. That's Jack spinning away, floating. Yes, beautiful shot. What an excellent set play, back screen, opening up Jack. Center is a good passer, and of course he gets a good look because he doesn't have anybody in his way. His performance against Kansas, perhaps the best single individual performance of the tournament with Elder, so ineffective with the ankle. And Elder is scoreless so far on this one. And that's going to be a whistle here. That's McHenry, Jim, reaching yep. in. And probably fortunate for Georgia Tech that he reached in because Spencer probably would have picked up the foul. Excellent move by McFarlane, who has a lot of quickness advantage on the inside. First on McHenry. 40-year-old Paul Hewitt. Second time he's taken Georgia Tech to the NCAAs. They lost back in the first round in his first season at Tech in 2001. Lost to a team that had a freshman guard by the name of Jameer Nelson. Lost to St. Joe's at first time in the tournament his first year back in 01. But has him now in his second trip to San Antonio in the Final Four. What a program he's building there in Atlanta. And Jim, you can just have your heart drop looking at Jameer Nelson sitting on that floor the other day at St. Joe's with the incredible career he's had knowing it had to come to an end on that moment. Bynum number 11 back in for Tech over the top McFarland. Yes that was Joey Graham over the top with the pass. Great pass by Graham particularly after it had to be pinpoint with Schentzer having such a size advantage. Jack and McFarland maybe over the back. Boy, he does not need that kind of a cheap foul because he's got so much work to do on the big man. And that's two, Billy. Get instant information updated live. Scoring, shooting percentages, rebounds, much more. You can find it all at CBSSportsLine.com. Yeah, that line, the regional final for Jarrett Jack, Billy. Oh, absolutely. They had everything, right? Down, rebounds, absolutely. assists. Absolutely. 29 points, 9 rebounds, 6 assists, 4 steals. Young man had a, another incredible game in the 
first round of the ACC tournament against North Carolina 17 three and six assists and made that jumper with 1.4 seconds to go to eliminate the Tar Heels. Jack now has seven 24 22 Tech and again full court pressure Tech trying to establish the tempo here. Oh and the ball McHenry with the steal. Just took it right away from Bobbick. Hit Henry, and that's going to count. Joey Graham with the goal tap. The press is working effectively, particularly with Lucas out of the game. Tech with its largest lead. We'll be right back. You see how Eddie Sutton can keep his starting lineup fresh and on the floor. That's going to be the key for him in this ball game. Full court pressure now. Bind him on Allen. Get up a lot of size. And Oklahoma State indeed with all five starters on the floor right now. And I think really nice substituting by Eddie Sutton to try to keep him fresh in his situation. McHenry went for the steal. Allen left open. Back out to McHenry, who's had a very active couple of minutes here. Well, Eddie Sutton put his head down. That's the second very cheap foul. One on Allen and one on McFarland. And Eddie Sutton's team with the short bench cannot afford to have those guys in any kind of foul trouble. But we've got two fouls now on McFarland and two on Allen. And both of them were reach touch type fouls. Marvin Lewis, one more time. Yes. Wow. Wow. He rattles it home for a fifth three pointer. He is getting open looks. When you get a guy with a hot hand like that, you've got to ride him. Allen ought to take Lewis with his powerful dribble drive. It's a 7 nothing run here for Tech. I think Allen can take Lewis. He's got to take advantage of it. Here he comes. A pie. You're not going to get that no. over Schencher. Exactly right, Jim. Good call there. Schencher just playing a one-man zone down inside. Nice, nice hit. Schencher out high. Lewis, not this time. But wasn't ready for that one. Oklahoma State ball. Jim, but what you can see, and I think that Georgia Tech being a little impatient right there when the ball goes into Schencher, what Oklahoma State has to do to help out McFarland is to double down. Then there'll be an easy opportunity to pass it ball, ball back out for an easy look. Lucas has to take over right now, and he's certainly capable of doing that. Find him on it. Lucas has hit one out of four from the field, and you know he had that four first half in the regional final, only to light it up with 17 second half points against St. Joe's. Nice switch by Bynum to help out. Allen had a clear path to the basket. Under 10 on the shot clock. Graham pulls up. Yes. Lewis, no match for either Graham or Allen. Whenever they get him in a matchup, they ought to take it. Lewis, the star of this half. Inside wide open center. There's the example, Jim, going right over the top. McFarlane with two fouls, really can't get too tight there. Graham, oh, way too strong. But Allen inside, and they're going to go the other way. Oh, is that Allen's third on a push? Right. And there you see, McFarlane can't get around him. I think Allen's going to the bench. It I is. think it was his third foul. Jim. That's a huge one, Billy. That is his third. That's why I said that touch foul before. He cannot afford to do that. Tough break here for Oklahoma State. How often do you see that in the final four? The star player for your team gets hit with three fouls in the first half. Well, changes a, the entire plan. He's a very active player. Now, one thing, Eddie Sutton set him down, not to keep him for foul trouble, but to keep him fresh. Now he was fresh, but picks up those cheap fouls. Eddie Sutton rubs his forehead. I don't blame him. Tough break for their team. It's a one and one here for Jack. You look across at this young man's stats, Jim, third team all conference player, 80% free throw shower. You, you look all across the board, there is nothing in his game that isn't solid. Third team all ACC and second cousin of Chris Duhon of Duke, who we'll see in the second game here against Connecticut. Now it's Graham's turn and Lucas's turn. They have got to step up. Graham's brother is in, his twin, Stephen, number 21. Joey and Stephen on the floor at the same time. And that's a traveling call. Near the conclusion 
of every tournament game, we select a Chevrolet MVP of the game from each team. And to date, Chevrolet with this wonderful program, helping America's universities and colleges, some $8 million on the Chevy series through the years. Carver now with Schenzer out of the ball game may give McFarland an opportunity to help out a little bit more defensively. Moore fakes inside. Tarver back up. Bobbick save that from out of bounds. Got some numbers, does Lucas. Stephen Graham, baseliner. Yes, off the bench for two. Huge play, and bench points are going to be so important. Oklahoma State has to somewhat negate the big numbers that Georgia Tech provides. Well, McFarland came out there and bumped. You've got to be careful with the two fouls. Buying him with the jumper. Harvard, second offensive rebound. Well, it's really helpful when you can have a guy come off the bench. You don't care whether he fouls, he pushes. You got enough bodies, you can come in here and do that. Absolutely. Play aggressive. There was a bump that got away with it, Stephen Graham. Bynum is defender. Lucas lost his footing, and Bynum takes advantage. Three pointer. Well, Eddie Sutton has made a living with transfers. That hasn't been the case for Georgia Tech, but Bynum sure is a good one to pick up from Arizona. And on the back, the push off. That is going against, looks like, it's going against Moore of Georgia Tech. Eddie Sutton and Paul Hewitt battling here. And Tech's up by nine. I remember 1976, first time when Indiana went to Michigan. During the regular season, Bob Knight grabbed me by the shoulder and said, hey, Packer, let me explain to you. Michigan and Indiana, the two best teams in the country, will meet in the Final Four, and he was right on the money. Met the championship, and Indiana won over Ricky Green and the Wolverines. Here's Lucas, over Jack, tough shot. Defender was right in his face, but Graham runs it down. And that was knocked out by Muhammad, they say, who thought he'd made his third theft. Looking out here right now, with Allen out of the ball game, I think it's time for Graham to step up, and I'm talking about Joey Graham. Georgia Tech back and back in in that kind of matchup zone of theirs. They've been really packing things in. Lucas may get a jump shot. Bobbick, he takes the shot. Tipped around to Elder. A lot of size on the floor for Georgia Tech. Boy, Jack was setting up Elder, but he gives it up inside. Short shot. Tarver, no good. Stephen Graham with a rebound. Stephen Graham's made some contributions, seeing a lot of time here with Allen out with the three fouls, including a jump shot. Well, McFarland's got good position on Tarver. Bobbick doesn't get him the ball inside. Well, you do take Allen out, you look at this mix here, and you say, where are the points coming from, don't you, Billy? Yes, you do. Outside, McFarland. Boy, Mohammed, you see B.J. Elder Mohammed. He walked for the second time, and it hasn't been called. Well, he had to go up there high to take that pass. Mohammed led him a little too much, but no whistle. Now we have one, and the timeout called by Paul Hewitt and, 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 and Georgia Tech. The reason for it, he wants to get Shenzhou back in this game to take advantage of the size. Special night tomorrow night on CBS. Now, McFarland has to be very careful the next two minutes, Jim. He's got two fouls on him. You know Allen's got two. See if Georgia Tech goes inside the Shenzhou. Down to seven seconds. Jack takes advantage of the screen. And it's McFarland. Joey Graham beat them down floor. His brother couldn't get him the ball. No field goal for over three minutes for the Cowboys. And McFarland, well defended by Moore and Chencher. Last touch by Tech. Boy, he has to realize that Chencher's going to be tough to shoot over. And then when Moore doubles down, there's just no room. Eddie Sutton's got some real problems in this ballgame right now. Foul trouble, 
And he's got to keep McFarland into the second half with just two on him. And here's Lucas way outside. Great rebound. Graham. Schencher influenced that shot. McFarland's on the ground. Georgia Tech has numbers. Bad pass and what a catch. Schencher, one more time. Drop Watch step, that. yes. Double-digit lead, and the Cowboys now have their biggest deficit of the entire tournament. 11. But when, but when McFarland fell, Jim, see, he was out of position. He couldn't afford to try to go for that block because of those two fouls. McFarland will challenge the seven-footer. Jack on a reach. Coming up, singular at the half, Greg Clark, Seth, they'll analyze the first half, plus the awarding of player and coach of the year and the singular greatest championship game poll. Remember, you can still vote coming up singular at the half. Jim, first. I want to put something in perspective about both of these teams in regard to all those teams that didn't make it to the Final Four. When this season started, preseason, Georgia Tech was picked to be seventh in the ACC. Oklahoma State was picked to be fifth in the Big yeah. 12. And here they are at the Final Four. Well, Georgia Tech gave everybody notice early that this was going to be a very serious contender when it ran off wins in the first 12 games, including the preseason NIT victory, where Georgia Tech beat both UConn and Texas Tech to win the championship. I think it's a very smart move by Eddie Sutton right now. There's 59 seconds to go. The problem is McFarland, the man he wants to take out of the game because of the foul situation, is shooting the free throws. We'll get him in now. He was lucky he made that shot because he definitely need to get him out of there. Good move by Eddie Sutton. So a senior from Livingston, Texas, Jason Miller, comes in for the final minute. Georgia Tech will have to give it up. There's about 20 second differential here. And wow. that's Miller over the back. And that's exactly why you didn't want McFarlane on the floor. How about Schencher's play in this game, Billy? Well, we noticed it, Jim, at the introduction to the lineups. McFarlane comes up to, what would you say, his neck? Yep. You know, no, no much, not much more than that, giving up incredible amount of size. Young man has a reach that's equal to nine feet. Oh, and a foul called on Marvin Lewis as Schencher missed that front end of the one and one. 70% free throw shooter is Schencher. That was a big foul shot opportunity for him there. And he'll send it down to the other end with a one and one. Bynum will check back in for Georgia Tech. Miller shoots 77%, for, so a chance here for Eddie Sutton to get some points on the board. Georgia Tech will still have to give up that ball here because the possession clock's about 12-second uh, differential. This young man at the line, another Eddie Sutton transfer from North Texas. University graduated last December and he's pursuing his teaching certificate at the moment and he too fails to make the front end still got a 12 second differential on the game clock shot clock Georgia Tech has not gotten elder started in this ball game right now might not be a bad idea to give him a touch or two here he comes missed his only two attempts elder Now a 10 on the shot clock with the dribble. Four on the shot clock. McHenry stuck in the corner. Schencher in time. And Bobek pulls it away. Not a good possession. Jerry Jack should have kept that ball alive with his dribble. Five seconds in the half. It's Joey Graham over Schencher, and he gets the roll. That's a big one. Terrific. To out the first half. Jerry Jack made a mistake by giving up that ball, and... Graham is just unbelievable how he can go and elevate down in the low post. The Georgia Tech fans like the way they, the Yellow Jackets were moving in that first half. We're about to begin the second half. All the starters are on the floor for each side. And a nod here real quick to the officials. Jim Burr, Donnie Gray, Tim Higgins getting the Final Four assignment. Jim, the score, seven-point margin. Exactly the same thing that Lethal Weapon 3 had against Las Vegas. A seven-point lead back in 1990. And things didn't work out quite so well that day as UNLV and Jerry Tarkanian took over the second half. We'll see what happens here. And, of course, UNLV went on to beat Duke in that championship game in Denver. 
So the two times in school history Georgia Tech's made it to college basketball's promised land. Duke has also been in the Final Four. Shincher over the top. Nice hands. Great hands, Billy. As Shincher, that was a tough pass. He just snagged it like it was nothing. Well, there again, very few teams have players strong enough to go up against Allen and be able to use that upper body strength as Elder did there. And Allen's got to be careful with that foul trouble. That's Graham on the drive. Shencher again rejects. Playing a one-man zone down inside. So big. Lewis thought about it. He was skipping to plant the feet. Shencher dunks it home. Boy, McHenry on a good heads-up play. Eddie Sutton really hot as to what happened down on the other end of the floor. Timeout, Cowboys. Trying to get this team fired up in the second half. He has, in the last two games, knocked down some big threes. Talking about Bobak, who has the ball right now. There's a McFarlane wide open. Georgia Tech got messed up on their assignments. And this full court pressure, Lucas is going to have to beat it, Jim, with the dribble to get that ball up court and get some numbers on the other end where Graham is such, and Allen are such good finishers. Allen has not made a basket since the 14-minute mark in the first half. Lucas since the 12-minute mark. Their yeah. top two guns, the co-MVPs of the Big 12, have been shut down, essentially. And that's going to be a shooting situation foul on Chencher. Let's go over to Bonnie. Well, Jim, three points Eddie Sutton made regarding the Cowboys coming out of halftime number one. We did a terrible job on Marvin Lewis. We want to put more size on him instead of John Lucas. Bobick or Allen or Weatherspoon number two. Didn't like the shot selection. Settling too much for Jays. Wants them to drive inside more and at least draw the foul number three. As far as Tony Allen and his three fouls, he said he'll play until he fouls out. And they need his offense for sure as Schincher collects his second foul. McFarlane to shoot one more. McFarlane, a great story, came in school, had to sit out that first year, and he has been able to graduate in three years and therefore will get an extra year of eligibility back. So he'll be back to play in this team as a, what would amount to a fifth-year senior. Opportunity to go inside. Schincher left open again. McFarland closes in on him. They have to kick it out. That's Jack falling down. Great job by McFarland to get that rebound. Got the numbers. A high lob. There it is. Almost lobbed it right into the basket. Allen gets the hoop again now. That's back to the 14-minute mark since Allen had last scored. That's a smart play by Allen. He knew he has to be very careful on his charges on the inside. Gentry got the edge here. Hook shot, doesn't drop. Nice defense by McFarland. Oklahoma State getting out and running now. Good idea for them to push the ball up the floor. Take advantage of the quickness McFarland has on Shenzhen. And when will Lucas get going with his game? Very similar numbers to what he performed in the first half against St. Joe's with only two points. Follow up, Graham tipped out, and it's Jack. Jack of Georgia Tech, Lewis with the three, still, nope, had five of those in the first half, McHenry put back. Now this pace, Jim, if you're Oklahoma State, you can get yourself in trouble going too quickly up and down the floor, because you know that Paul Hewitt would like to see this, then he'll put those fresh troops off that bench and catch you when you're winded. Again, Lucas with two in the first half. Last week came out with 17 in the second half. Is he ready? Not this time. And McHenry. Hey, those are some pretty good rebounds. McHenry's getting in traffic because Graham is a great rebounder inside. And Schuster inside. And see, he beats McFarland. As I said, Jim, Oklahoma State could not get in this kind of a running situation because McFarland's going to wear down. The rambling wreck with a 12-point lead, the largest of the night. Good fight over the top defensively by Jack. Likewise, Lewis. Ran back it in McHenry. Has to give it up. They converged on him. Double them up. Now it's Allen. Step in and ooh, he'll go to the line for two. 
They are able to find Schencher open a number of times inside, Billy. Well, it's because you can see McFallen coming down the court. He's got to run the full 94 feet if he's going to run one way to try to get on the break. Somebody has to pick up his man at least temporarily. McFarlane really tired out there in the early going here in the second half. The second foul on McHenry. And Bynum and Moore come in for Georgia Tech. There's it's Crawford for Oklahoma State. Allen first team, all Big 12. Picked by the coaches as the player of the year. All Big 12, all defensive team. But again, his style has been somewhat hampered because of that early foul trouble today. Now a change. McFarlane is going to move outside so he doesn't have to be with Schenzer. That puts Crawford on him down low. Nice move here by Eddie Sutton. Try to give McFarlane an opportunity to breathe a little bit. Jack got the edge on Lucas, but now wow, Crawford. Good defense. Boy, did he come in and make a play off the bench. Crawford gets it going the other way. Is, Is that this the court? Oh, no, oh, it's a foul on Marvin Lewis of Tech. Huge call there, Jim. And I think it was a good call. Lewis didn't get position, but he should have been looking to try to draw the charge. And now he has three, just like Allen. Don't miss a minute of March Madness. Live scores and stats, video highlights, tournament photos, all the latest news from right here in San Antonio. Get it all at NCAAsports.com. Good job here by Oklahoma State not to let this game get away from him. Elder's going to come in. Lewis with three has to sit down. How about Elder? No points in this game. Now, again, limited with his movement last Sunday in 12 minutes. He had no points in that first half, got his first basket just a moment ago. What do you expect out of him in the second half? But well, Jimmy's a streaky scorer, and he still has that great range on his jump shot. Eight-point lead, Yellow Jackets. Well, Dukey's got the game face on. Yep. I say everyone would be happy building. with the game. I'm sure the Duke fans would be happy with the results. Tech's lead was 12 a moment ago. Allen's on Elder. Moore out high. Nice backdoor cut. Jack, and he's hit with the body by Crawford. The big man, Luke, is making some plays for Georgia Tech. Nice block, and there he is getting away again. That time for McFarland, and then on the semi break, gets away again. He's very rested, had a chance to sit down for numerous minutes in that first half. He's got nine rebounds in the game. Go along with 11 points, and Jack with one more coming. Had 17 rebounds against North Carolina in the ACC tournament, so he's capable of putting up some big numbers as the big man from Australia. And the two free throws and the approval. Carlton and Louise. <laughs> They're from Fort Washington, Maryland. And now they bring back in Muhammad as Jack will go to the bench. And here's the press again by Georgia Tech. Lining up straight man to man, not guarding the man, taking the ball out of bounds, which means Schenzer can be all the way back in a one man zone. Allen broke. He was open for a moment. It'll be Bynum on Lucas. Tough matchup right here. They've had some free throws from Allen, but without a field goal for three minutes and another push-off foul going against the Yellow Jackets. Boy, Graham is just so quick with that first step off the dribble. Elder cannot stay with it, and I don't think he'd stay with him on a good leg. Two on Elder. Graham, one of the most explosive players in college basketball. I wonder if Lucas changed the sneakers at halftime. He did that up at the Meadowlands after that There's woeful that. first half, and that's a travel call on Graham. He really doesn't need to travel the way he explodes, Jim, but no question he did on that one. Kind of preconceived in his mind that he wanted to make the drive to that open basket. Right, he says, please, this is not the team I know. Well, they were number one in the Big 12 assist turnover ratio, and in this first half, had all kinds of problems in that area. Here's Eight Elder. Turnovers. Elder with the three, and Allen underneath. Looking around everywhere, finds Joey Graham, and he's hit with the body. He's going to the line for a three-point play. Good push-up and good eye contact between these two stars, the newcomer of the year and the player of the year in the Big 12. 
How about those hands on Graham? Did we, we have not seen a guy with stronger set of hands this year in college basketball. Look at that catch. He was looking at the defender. Because he has such confidence in his hands, he didn't have to worry about looking the ball into them. That takes some real skill, and you got to have a real set of paws to do that. Crawford tried to sneak around Chincher. Nothing doing there. Chincher now has his double-double. But Crawford ought to be very, very aggressive right now on Chencher because he's out there give McFarlane a rest and maybe pick up some fouls bad place to pick up your dribble that's Muhammad and it's Bobbitt coming out they got the numbers they got Lucas up ahead let him oh, too much nice. Bynum is there to defend and his last touch by Georgia Tech Great run down by Lucas. That ball was, he had to stop on a dime to save that one. The ball was thrown without enough arc in it. And watch Lucas come to a great stop. Terrific job on his part. Jack has returned to the lineup for Georgia Tech. Big possession here. It's Graham again. Physical, yes. He just was able to shrug off the defender to free himself. Create space, down to six. Jack back in the game, Jim, to try to bring some semblance of order to the half-court offense. Find a Bad tough shot. shot. Tough shot. shot. And it's Graham. Nothing doing there. Get out of my way, he says. You see Georgia Tech call a timeout after this possession. That's a bad foul there by Moore. Georgia Tech losing their composure here. Nice comeback by Eddie Sutton's club. This is the whole sea of orange here in San Antonio. They're used to having a lot of orange to cheer for down in these parts, but it's usually for that team just north of here up in Austin, the Longhorns. When you have a player like Lucas, Jim, not having a big game, you don't want to get any cheap fouls on him as Moore just pushed him. Gives a man confidence. That's 16 fouls already in the second half versus only one committed by the Cowboys. And that's going the other way. Nice defense by McHenry. Graham really putting some pressure on that Georgia Tech defense now with his ability to penetrate. Now they've done a good job has Oklahoma State on Lewis who's back in the game being guarded by Allen. Allen doesn't have to worry about him driving so he can play him tight for the jump shot. They tried to steal some minutes with Lewis with the three foul. Schencher. Good effort by Crawford, just giving up too much size. Solid screen coming up right here. Allen trying to create. McHenry kept his eye on it. Three on one. Jack whips it over. Bynum. Oh, oh wow. man. And that was Tony Allen going up there. Now, now what it's is going to be on? It's on Allen. Already seen the signal from Donnie Gray. That's number four. Allen had no business, Jim, on this one trying to make this play. He's got to know that he's got three fouls on him. I think Bynum had no angle to even make a Absolutely. shot here. Absolutely. You've got to even give up. Would you give up two points to have him just with three as opposed to four fouls? Of course. Absolutely. He's got to think that way. How about that? That was Allen collecting his fourth as he fouled his high school teammate from Crane Tech in Chicago. Now that really puts the pressure on Joey Graham of falling back in the ball game right now. Eddie Sutton wanted to rest him a little bit longer. So Joey Graham and Lucas are going to have to be the guys to provide the points. It was Tony Allen who tried to bring Bynum over to Oklahoma State when he sent out word he was leaving Blue Dolson's Arizona Wildcats. Decided at the end to go after Georgia Tech go there he had been recruited heavily out of high school but I tell you his decision to go to Tech may have in fact resulted in both of these teams being here because That's John it. Lucas would have never gone to Stillwater had Bynum been there and been the point guard they worked out well for both sides Witherspoon inside off the bottom feed that's the best attack Oklahoma State has had against that full court pressure and it was all set up by Lucas dribbling through it to get a good passing lane McHenry doesn't shoot often. Three, no good, and Graham. But you got to take that look, Jim, if you're that wide open. Averages only three points a game. McHenry's had a very active and 
Come up with some big plays. Ball game here today. Graham, two steps, oh. and Trish. He's got the drive. He can go inside and elevate, and he's got the nice 18-foot jump shot. And he has 14 for the Cowboys. Again, trimming it to six. Jack off a double pick, and last touch by Bobby. So the Cowboys trying to chip away here. Six-point game, Georgia Tech. Jim, very interesting. Now, Paul Hewitt's going with a small team. First time today he's tried this. Jenser, the only man of size. Three guards in the ball game right now. Traveling on McHenry. And that was great defense by Lucas. Not allowing, and Bobic, not allowing the backdoor cut by Jack. McHenry had to pull up the pass. The defense was terrific. Georgia Tech had a big lead of 12 at 45 33. The cut in half. They said a small team on the floor for Georgia Tech. Looking for Graham. Ten with Lucas. Eight with Lucas. Stepping back, Bobic in the corner, way too long. Marvin Lewis, who set some pace at the beginning of this game with five threes in the first half, in the first 12 minutes. I think we're going to see Jack put the ball on the floor and try to drive to the hoop some with this smaller team on the floor. Chincher got his defender behind him, left hook. Oh, yes. Beautiful shot. No defense for that for McFarland. 15 points for the seven footer, eight in this half. I was expecting the wheel back to the right, as was McFarland. Went left hand. Just no defense for that play. Uh, Lucas wanted to take that shot, lost the handle. Graham with three defenders around him. Draws the foul, and that's going to be the fourth on Marvin Lewis. Monday on the Late Show, catch Jessica Simpson and Nick Lachey. And later in the week, Dave's all new with Jimmy Fallon, Usher, and Bruce Willis here on America's Most Watched Network. Biggest point total on the year for Joey Graham was 36 that he had against Nebraska. He about the, that? Yep. It, but you can see, you know, you can see him having those kind of numbers next year all the time. I mean, it's it's the kind of player that he is. He's very difficult to defend. That was the second most points ever scored in Oklahoma State in a home game. Bob Curlin with 58 against St. Louis, St. Louis way back in 46. So the record has stood for a long, long time. And they have to take Lewis out with the four. Ishmael Muhammad, the MVP of the preseason NIT, comes onto the floor. Hit a 36 in that one game, that one outburst. is a high game by any individual player in the Big 12 this year. And he gets the second to go. Seven-point lead for the Yellow Jackets. Still looking inside. McFarlane's got his hands full. Georgia Tech picking up their dribble. Oh, that was a bad play that time by Jack. Lucas got down underneath him. They're trying to take advantage of that size differential in the backcourt. Big Luke's got to realize everyone's not 7-1. That's right. He's going to catch his breath. Talk about a smaller lineup. They do have Theotis Tarver at 6-9 on the floor. 44 for the Jackets. Now Paul Hewitt trying to steal some minutes right now to keep Jensen rested. I keep wondering about Lucas. He's got Bynum on him. He's doing a pretty good job. Bynum's took his eye off him looking for the screen. There Big it is. Mistake. There it is. His first three and his first field goal since 12-29 on the clock in the first half. Bynum was looking for the screen when he took his eye off. Smart play by Lucas. Recognize. Take advantage. Bynum. That's out of bounds off Bynum. You see it right here. Look at Bynum, looks back, wondering where the screen is when he takes his eye off his mess. See, he looks back, too late. Pretty familiar spot on the floor for Lucas. Oh, yeah. 
We saw one from that territory well, last Saturday night. Even. Confidence coming. Oh, it'll look good from here. Rattles out. McFarlane. Great hustle. Nine minutes left. Four-point game. 16 to 8 spell here for the Cowboys. Again, Lucas starting to feel it. Oh, yes. you, you gotta love the guy. Remember last week, horrible first half against St. Joe. Came back strong, doing the same thing now. Time Terrific. Out, Georgia Tech. John Lucas. He's worn it down the stretch. He's brought him back within a basket. And there's John Lucas Sr. looking on. Remember? The instructions he was giving him last week from the stands. I haven't seen it here today. But the young man who was co most valuable player in the Big 12 stepping up now as he needs to. And around with the steel weather spoon almost. And you know the clock should not have been reset. reset. No. But the referees didn't see it. Got a fresh 35. Yep. Elder, he was bumped out there by Bobbitt. You saw the mentality of a scorer in Elder right there. He realizes he's got to step up and put some points on the board for his team, even though he's not in as good a shape as he's been. It's only the second team foul, third team foul, with 8.20 remaining in the game. For the Cowboys, only three. Looking for the lob is Mohammed. McFarland comes over. Oh, oh Mohammed, what a move. I said, Jim, in that first half, when he elevates, there aren't many people can stay with him. He missed that dunk in the first half. Might have got by with an offensive push off there. No call. Mohammed, Big basket. He scored 38 points in 38 minutes in New York back in November when America found out that Georgia Tech was going to be a real team this season when they won the NIT. McFarland, three players converge, and Jack reached in to take it away. It's Muhammad inside, Bobbitt got a hand on it, belongs to Tech. 7.41 remaining here in San Antonio. Georgia Tech and Oklahoma State look like we're heading down to the wire with this one. John Lucas is starting to simmer. Well, one is going to be the real key is when does when does Tony Allen come back in this ball game? Now, I think Eddie Sutton with a four-point or a six-point differential will keep him there as long as he can. Actually, he brought him there. back in. Yep. He snuck one in. I thought he would keep him to about the six-minute mark. He's brought him back in. He realized how important it is now to try to take this lead when his team is on a nice roll. Shensher, McFarland can't defend oh, that shot. Why? Uh -oh. yep. Why did Graham go after that ball? I don't think it was going in anyway. He was trying to back away, I think, at the last second, but I, I don't think that ball was going in, Jim. He got a piece of it. There it is. Yeah, that ball that was, was not going in. It was going to the back of the rim, but he got a fingernail on it, and that's enough for basket interference. It just was too aggressive, and the best comeback that Oklahoma State has had, down 16 at Kansas State, and that might have turned their season around. Lucas was the winning shot man in that game. He's got that rolled down. They're here because of his shot last week. That's McFarland, and he draws one on Schencher, and he's got a three-point try. And Jack points to himself, realizing no sense reaching in. Now watch Jack reach in to commit the foul. No chance to make a play. We've seen bad defensive plays on both ends of the floor the last two possessions. Crawford out Graham in, Jim, so Eddie Sutton just wanted to get Graham back under control. Okay, McFarland. They're saying that foul was on Jack, which is his second. So, front of the rim. Oklahoma State as a team shoots 69%. Falling down there right around that, about 65. Reach around foul that time. 
And what Sensher does very well for a big man is he moves his feet instead of trying to use his arms to shield off the defender. And you can see he's so tall, McFarlane just can't get around him. That brings Crawford back into the game. And that puts now three on McFarlane. Well, see what, what There's they're, Graham out. Yeah, Graham out. They're probably going to use him on defense. They move Crawford moves over defensively, puts McFarlane out on McHenry. Figuring he's not as big a threat. It's Muhammad. Boy, Allen was backing off, looking for some help with the four fouls. Under seven to play. Shensher gives it up, Muhammad, and we've got a foul inside. It's going to be on Crawford. Well, Crawford says, wait a minute, what am I traveling? No, I'll tell you what, Jim, it is so difficult to stop Muhammad. Connecticut found out early in the year. As did Texas Tech. Anybody that tries to stop him, he is so powerful. And look at the foul situation. Four for Lewis, four for Allen. And Lewis continues to sit on the Tech side. But Mahan, not a good free throw shooter, hits that one. He's shooting 47%. Now here you see what's happening. Eddie Sutton now trying to substitute offense and defense. Get Crawford on the defensive end, Graham on the offense. And that's Shinsher out. How about it? Hits a pair. Hey, hit seven out of seven from the field, though, to beat UConn earlier this year. And we've got UConn Duke coming up later here in San Antonio. He had 22 big points in that game. Bobbitt, open wings. Good long rebound by Graham. Well, that was a good look. Yep. Graham now has 10 rebounds. He's got a double-double. It's Allen. Nice defense by Muhammad. Like Muhammad's cramping up a little bit out there. Yeah, he's really grimacing. grimacing. Yeah, he's really grimacing. There's Allen. Nice wow. speed. Whip that one right around the tech defender. And John Lucas looking up, cheering on. Muhammad is running. I don't know if he's going over to tell Paul Hewitt that he's got a problem or he's going over there to yep. get the timeout. Yeah. He went right by and told his coach, I need some help, and they take the time out. Look at this pass right here. Beauty. Well, he looked like he was cramping up, Jim. We saw him wincing going down the floor, being worked on right now, out of the ball game, buying him in. Bynum has had his problems decision-making here in the second half. He Lucas on him. Four-point game at the final four. McFarlane trying to go down underneath Schenzer right now. It's Elder. Surprised they didn't try to make a move with Allen. Saddled with four. Allen's a lot quicker, though. Four on the shot clock. Bynum gives it up. And McHenry comes flying in. Baseline. Boy, that was a good catch by McHenry because that Bynum again went up in the air with no place to go with the ball. Got lucky. No whistle, and out to McHenry again. Graham could get a better shot than that. Eddie Sutton said he was hit on the arm. But again, the big strength, upper body strength of Elder, able to hold him off. A good sequence for Tech out of that timeout. A basket and a stop, and looking for more. Where is Bynum going? Oh, no. oh and he called a timeout and got away with it, Jim. Under five to play. Tech in front by six. Bynum's timeout straps Georgia Tech. Only one left. Let's go over to Bonnie. Jim, quick injury update on the Jackets. Ishmael Muhammad this week in practice. He started developing some tendonitis in his right knee. That's what was bugging him and it caused him to uh, call the timeout. But the Jackets are planning on putting him back in. Inbound here for the Jackets. 
Shenshaw doubled up, leaves Henry open, free throw line, no good, and that's Bobby. That's twice now that Henry has had wide open shots. He's not a good shooter, but you gotta take him when you're that wide open. It's Allen in traffic. Again, another beautiful assist by Tony Allen, creating something for the Cowboys. Very difficult to handle. Marvin Lewis back on the floor with four fouls. Inside to go, oh, Shetcher. Oh, hands, Jim. And how about the quick catch and release by Shetcher? He does not bring the ball down. We've seen him do that time and time again this year, which is a great asset for a big man. Having a monster game with 19. Allen and a reach-in call on deck. That's now, on McHenry. Now, Allen with four fouls. He wants to penetrate. He has to be very careful not to pick up the charge. There were those hands, Jim. Just a nice catch. And watch him. He does not bring the ball down. No chance for the defender to get to him. Plays like that, he'll be able to realize his dream this summer in Athens. He'd like to play for Australia's Olympic team this August over in Greece. Talking about Shenshire. So they put down McHenry with the three fouls, and Allen's at the line. And that's the ninth team foul on Georgia Tech, so this will be the final one and one for the Cowboys. Muhammad back in the ball game, so I guess that knee of his is uh, is ready to go. We'll see because Allen will be guarding it. The officials trying to keep the, the players from both teams from coming in the lane a little bit too early. First one on in is the guy that creates the violation. Got a vote. Four point game, four minutes to go. Well, we expect it to be good games, Jim. That's exactly what we've got. With a great atmosphere as well. Now more wide open. Now he is a pretty good shooter. And look at Allen with the four fouls aggressively trying to make the bet. He is terrific at stealing the ball. Well, he'd like to have that fourth foul back, the one he fouled Bynum, who puts up the jumper and will Bynum off the bench with nine. Boy, he is having a great game individually off the bench as far as putting points on the board. Tough matchup for Lucas. He's so much stronger. They hold up a sign that says, who's your reverse from the Oklahoma State bench? Setting the plays, and here's Lucas working on Bynum. Nice. And all air, and it's Georgia Tech coming out with it. Without that time, without that timeout, see, he's in trouble. Big foul by McFarland. They should have just kept their hands moving and not reached in. They had Shenshaw in real trouble. That is four on McFarland. We'll be right back to San Antonio. And this Georgia Tech team. So uh, thoroughly supported by Bobby Crimmins, who took them to the Final Four back in 1990, and who had the court named after Billy this year, the Thriller Dog. Right. A little pickup, kind of a phony press by Oklahoma State, realizing Jack can probably handle it. Looking for the pick and roll, Shenshaw again, great position. Problem with four was on Shenshaw's back. And underneath, three second call. On Shenshaw. Jim, probably that will be a violation on Shenshaw, but what happened? That ball should have gone into him. He had good position on McFarland, particularly the foul trouble McFarland. The ball should have gone inside on that pass. And now you see Paul Hewitt going offense and defense. McHenry and Mohammed coming back in the ball game now on the defensive end of the floor. Marvin Lewis hit those big shots early. You wonder if he has one more in him. There's Lucas gunning back in the rim. And look at McFarland snag it with two hands. Two and a half to play. Bobic hesitated. Now dishes inside and over the back with Muhammad. That'll send Graham to the line for a pair. That's a good foul, though. You don't want a guy to get that easy one. Oklahoma State showing some great interior passing here down this stretch. Four for Lewis. Well, and four for McFarland and Allen. Well, a lot of difference here, Jim. With that deep bench that Georgia Tech has, obviously there's certain guys you don't want to have in foul trouble, but they have replacements at almost every position. We had a five at the line. Good with that one. And Lewis again, as you said, Billy, offense, defense. Joey Graham will shoot one more. He and his twin brother, Stephen, on this team, groomed at an early age by a coach that formerly took a team to the Final Four, Ted Owens. Ted Owens, and he took these kids around to the Big Eight area when they were going to go ahead and transfer. 
former coach at Kansas, and they ended up at Oklahoma State. Double team for the first time. Jack recognizes. Remember, he has no timeouts. And there's Lewis coming out with it. Now Jack realized he had no timeouts. Remember that bad one that they had to call before by Bynum left them without one. One left. Two minutes to go. Still in front by four, and that's going to be outside on Lucas. Giving up too much strength. He just can't hold Bynum off. That'll be a one and one. First foul of the night on Lucas. And let's check the CBS Sports line stat of the game. No threes in the second half for Georgia Tech. Bynum an 80% free throw shooter. Complete stat, CBSSportsLine.com. He had more NCAA tournament experience to Bynum than any other Georgia Tech player coming into the tournament. He had played three games as a freshman at Arizona. One and one in front of the rim. Never got good extension on that shot. Way short. Huge miss. And a big foul on Bynum. The last thing you want to do, and Bynum is not thinking out there very well, is to stop this clock. And they're in the double bonus, so it'll be two shots again. A reminder, Sunday, 60 minutes. Did a male nurse get away with murder at one hospital after another? That story and more, Sunday, 60 minutes. One minute and 52 seconds in this one. Lucas, a good free throw shooter with two. What a difference, Jim. Bynum, an 80% free throw shooter, misses the front end of a one and one. Then goes down and stops the clock, allows Oklahoma State to put a good free throw shooter on the line. Got to play with your hands, your feet, and your head as well. Did not get the second. But it's a one possession game at three. Bobic, big assignment now to stop Jack. He's got to make him pick up his dribble. And Lewis would be smart to get rid of this ball. He's got the good stealer on him. Yeah, Lucas with only one foul. Bynum coming off a miss. Ten seconds, working, working. Puts up the shot short. Tipped around, and it's McFarland. Cowboys can tie it with the three. I hear the whistle blowing. Who wants the timeout? Oklahoma State, yes. Paul Hewitt thought Bynum had been fouled on the shot. 1.19 to go. They keep chipping away. They can tie it with a three. They've had some great interior passing on drives by Graham and Allen. I think that's what they ought to go back to. Let Allen and Graham handle this ball, penetrate, and try to get something inside. Oh, oh Lucas lost it. Lucas took his eye off of it. It's the same combo that connected at the end against St. Joe's. Graham to Lucas. Well, in that particular case, Lucas was ready to make his move as the ball was being thrown. Tough break there. But I thought they tried to, ought to set up Graham immediately. Again, 17,000 the Cowboys. A non-shooting foul would be a one and one, not double bonus. One minute left. Bynum now being guarded by Allen, so. Marvin Lewis shut out the second half. And look at him, oh, Great defense by Bobick, and again, Jack tried to go back door. Nothing there. It's the second time in this half. Jack went back door and was well defended. No passing lane available. You can see Lewis. He thinks he's going back door. Cut. It's too late. Bobic does a good job. Lucas did a great job. Cowboys, if they can. Well, if they just go for the two here, they got to like the fact it's a one and one at the other oh, end. Oh, yeah, you're going for two here. And they got slashing to the basket. McFarland and whistle. And it's still Cowboy ball. Terrific block on the inside. 39 seconds. I still think you want to go for two here, Eddie Sutton. He's got guys that can penetrate and create even a old-time three-point play. Looking for a sudden setup. They call timeout. Patsy with the obvious nerves. Here we go with the Cowboys. 36 seconds and counting. Lucas thought about it, but Schincher was closing in. No chance. They still ought to be thinking, too. There's plenty of time here to drive. Well, here you go for the time. Got it. Yes, again! It's John Lucas with the clutch three. He's amazing, isn't he? Eddie Sutton calls a timeout to set his defense up. 26 seconds left, and they have fought all the way back from 12 down to tie it. Unbelievable.
Well, very important for Jack to have the ball in his hands to initiate this offense. Who's the go-to? Who's the go-to guy here? I think the go-to guy is keep that ball in Jack's hands. He's going to get double teamed here. Gets away from it easily. It's more out high with 17 seconds and a spot of Monday night's final on the line. Ask for the ball back. And this is exactly the situation they had against North Carolina. Ten seconds to go in the national semifinal. Bynum with Lucas defending. With five seconds, it's Bynum. Fakes outside, drives in. Three seconds. Bynum! Oh, yes! yes with one it's time! Lucas launches! No! And George attacks Rev LeBron to the championship game! who time after time has taken his man. He has been the entire bench from a scoring standpoint for Georgia Tech.